Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another amazing coffee conversation. I'm just going to double check that we are live, that I can see everybody, that I can see your comments. So excited to be back with you for our first coffee conversation of 2024. I am so thrilled to be kicking off my year with time spent in this amazing community of like-minded souls and Reiki practitioners and spiritual seekers and change makers in this world. We're all working to make earth, make our time here in this human form a better place and a more pleasant experience and uplifting, expansive experience for everyone. And so I'm so grateful for all of you here today. I would love to know over in the comments where you're watching from, what you are drinking, all of that good stuff. I am currently in Tennessee as per usual. I'm getting ready for a year of full travel for me. I will be taking off to Houston, Texas to meet up with Christine, our lovely president and founder in Houston to do a series of workshops. So if you're in Houston and want more information on those, feel free to reach out to either myself or Christine and we can give you some information on that. I am drinking coffee this morning. I didn't sleep all that well last night. I've been getting really into dream work and my guides have been dutifully giving me many, many dreams to, to work through and parse through. So I spent a lot of last night dreaming and woke up feeling a little bit tired this morning. So I have my coffee in one of my favorite mugs. I would love to know where you guys are watching from, what you're drinking this morning. Hello, hello to Perla in Ontario. So excited that you're here. You'll have to forgive my nose. I have a little bit of allergies this morning. Hopefully those will clear up soon. And hopefully my internet is also going to be okay. It's been a little in and out lately. So hopefully we'll be fine there. If I happen to freeze, just let me know in the chat. I'll give everybody a few minutes to come in. I'd love to know who's watching, again, where you're watching from, what you're drinking, how you're feeling about the start of 2024. That is incredibly exciting that we are rounding the bases into a new year, looking ahead to what we want to call into this year, what we're ready to leave behind, all of that good stuff. I am very excited for 2024. I think it's going to be a fantastic year. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, once again, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another amazing conversation. Today, we're going to be diving into an introduction to shamanic Reiki. If you've hung out in the Reiki Cafe community on Facebook or listened to our podcast for any length of time, you'll know that one of Reiki Cafe's pillars is shamanic Reiki. It's a shamanic Reiki practice. And so often we get questions about, well, what is shamanic Reiki? And, and how do we know what the difference is between shamanic Reiki and traditional Usui Reiki Ryoho? Or how do I listen to my spirit guides? And can shamanic Reiki help me develop my clairvoyance? And what about cultural appropriation? And, and all of these really important questions that come up when we start talking about shamanic Reiki practices. And so that's what we're going to be diving into today. But before we dive in too deep, I do want to just remind you all that we are now in open enrollment for our amazing Soul Rising Shamanic Reiki program. So if you have been looking at this podcast, looking at this title and thinking, oh, I would love to learn more about Shamanic Reiki. I would love to develop my clairvoyance. I'd love to meet my spirit team, to understand what my Reiki guide is telling me, to find my power animal and connect with that source of love and protection protection in the spiritual realm. I would love to be able to connect with my intuition and distinguish what it's saying versus what my mind is saying. And I'd love to be able to learn how to trust my intuition. You know, I would love to be able to break out of the cycles of day-to-day -day life. I feel like I'm just waking up, I'm going to work, I'm eating, I'm going to sleep, I'm doing it all over again. And I feel like I am just stuck in this rut, stuck in this rhythm of day-to-day -day life that I'm ready to get out of. I find myself getting angry or sad or anxious or frustrated about the smallest things. And then when the big things happen, I can't seem to control my emotions. I can't seem to help feeling overwhelmed and overtaken by all of this emotional heaviness that I'm carrying around with me and it's making me tired and I'm chronically fatigued and my physical health isn't well. If any of these things sound like you, 
I highly, highly encourage you to check out our Soul Rising Shamanic Reiki program. This is a four-month online course specifically designed to bring you into connection with yourself, to facilitate healing from the inside out, and to teach you how to do things like shamanic journey, like connect to your spirit teams, like develop your clairvoyance. We're going to be learning about the chakras and how your chakras correlate with your physical health, but also your psychological health. So if you're struggling with things like autoimmune disease or anxiety or depression, if you're struggling with these kinds of illnesses, we're going to address those in this course. We're going to look at what is at the core of these issues that you're experiencing and how can we work together in a safe container in a community of like-minded souls where people understand what you're going through. How can we work through these and then get you to the other side where you wake up in the morning and you have energy, where you feel like you're living from your purpose, where you know that you are surrounded by a team of loving guides, spirit guides, power animals, etc. You can feel the connection to nature to the energy all around you. You can see beyond this physical reality and into the spiritual spiritual reality that is underlying all of it. That ability to feel connected and tuned in and tapped in and so excited and ready for what is to come while also having an amazing toolkit of spiritual tools that you can use so that the next time you do feel triggered or the next time you're going through a difficult space in your life or the next time you're trying to make a big decision, you're not left feeling overwhelmed or lost or like you don't know what to do and there's a right answer, but you don't know which one it is and you don't know how to get there. You're going to step out of that cycle. You're going to step into knowing that you have all of the answers you need within you and not in just a cliche way, right? Of how we hear in the spiritual community, all the answers are within you, but truly understanding that yes, all of the answers are within you and having the confidence in yourself to be able to believe that, to know that to be true and to know that you have the tools to be able to help access that knowledge and access that wisdom. And as you're doing this deep inner work to heal your inner child, we have an entire module on healing your inner child child and how powerful that is when we reunite with our shadow selves, with our past selves, and we create a whole being. When we heal those psychological wounds, we're going to look at the chakras and how they correlate to our physical health and look at tangible tools and techniques that we can use to activate and balance our chakras, but also to bring health and healing to ourselves on all levels, physical, emotional, psychological, spiritual, etc. We're going to learn how to shamanic journey. We're going to look at spiritual coaching tools to help you find a really balanced, healthy perspective of your life, to be able to balance the physical and the spiritual. And it's actually 11-11 my time as I'm talking about this. So I'm going to take that as a sign that whoever is ready for Soul Rising is going to be listening to this today. If you are interested, click the link in the notes to learn more. We are currently in early bird pricing. So this is the lowest financial exchange that this course will ever be on. And it's a really beautiful opportunity to commit to yourself in this new year, to head into 2024, knowing that there is more for you, knowing that you're not stuck, even if it feels like you're stuck, even if it feels like all you can see is darkness and there is nothing you can do. This is just what life is. This is all it has to offer. And you've just kind of got to suck it up and move on. Even if that's where you are, it's okay. There is more for you. Whether you are looking for a spiritual course to help you deepen your practice, to help you understand Reiki in a new way, we're going to be reteaching you the Reiki teachings through a shamanic lens. We're going to be looking at the chakras, at shamanistic practices, at connecting with your spirit guides, at clairvoyance, at all of these things. Whether you're looking for a spiritual education or you're looking for self-healing, or you're looking to just kickstart your life in 2024 and find something fresh, reconnect to your purpose, reconnect to who you're meant to be and feel rooted in that truth, then this course is for you. Early bird pricing ends at the end of the month, I believe. Let me double check that. Yes, early bird pricing ends January 30th. And we will then be moving into regular pricing for this program. Classes start February 10th, which if you have a keen eye for dates and astrology, you'll know is the Lunar New Year. So we're really going to be stepping into this energy of rebirth and renewal and regeneration and co-creation with the universe to create the life of our dreams, to unleash who we truly are, to release the layers of limiting beliefs and subconscious programming and traumas and memories and stagnant energy and blocked energy and all of this. We're going to release, release, release 
so that we can step into the truth of who we are, into our most expansive selves, into the fullest expression of who we can be, feeling empowered, feeling aligned, feeling wise and knowledgeable and solid in that knowledge. And so if you are interested, click the link to learn more, send myself or Christine a message. We would love to hop on a call to chat with you about if this is the right program for you. Or if you're like, yes, I'm in, I'm excited, I'm ready, then click the link. You can register now, save your seat in this amazing course. Spaces are going fast. And like I said, we're only on early bird enrollment for a little while longer. So if you are feeling the call, class to start February 10th, and we are so excited to get to work with you. So with all of that said, today we are going to be diving into what is shamanic Reiki? What are we talking about when we're talking about taking you on a shamanic journey and reconnecting to the shamanic roots of Reiki and so many important topics that we cover here at Reiki Cafe University? And so I think it's important to start knowing that we have so many amazing people listening to this from all over the world. I think it's important to start with a really foundational knowledge of how we define Reiki here at Reiki Cafe University. Because... There are so many different ways of viewing Reiki healing, and there are so many different ways that it's being taught, right? We have Karuna Reiki and Holy Fire Reiki and Angelic Reiki and all of these things. And so what we're going to be basing this conversation on here today at Reiki Cafe University is Usui Reiki Ryoho, which is believed to be the closest form of Reiki teachings to what Mikao Usui originally brought down with him from the mountain. And Usui Reiki Ryoho really views Reiki as a universal source of energy, a universal source of healing. And so Reiki literally translates to universal life force. And so Reiki is based on this idea that within all things, living, not living, animated, unanimated, doesn't matter, within all things in this physical reality, there flows an undercurrent of universal life force energy. It is this energy that connects us all, that makes us all one. A universal life force energy that animates us, that allows us to experience this physical life, that connects us to our spiritual selves and connects us to the divine. And so in Usui Reiki Ryoho, Reiki energy is very divine. It is a very ethereal, very uplifting, clear, pure energy form. When we practice Reiki, what we're doing is we are working with that energy. We're working with our energy channels and with the Reiki teachings that Mikao Usui, the founder of Reiki, brought with him when he introduced Reiki into society, into the culture, and into our knowledge and our, our toolkit here on earth. And so when we're practicing Reiki, what we're doing is we're taking this universal energy and we're bringing it into a holistic approach to healing that works with the entire person. And so what a Reiki practice looks like differs from person to person because what our universal life force energy is going to need to come through us is going to be different than the person sitting next to us. And this is the beauty of having a Reiki practice. And this is something that we cover in many, many podcasts and blogs is that Reiki is not stagnant. You don't just get your attunement and then you have Reiki forever and you never have to practice. You never have to work with it. It's just always there. It is always there, right? That's why it is a universal life force energy. The energy of Reiki is always with us, whether we are attuned or not. But when we commit to becoming a practitioner, whether that's just for self-healing as a Reiki level one, or moving into practicing with others as a Reiki level two or a Reiki master. When we commit to being a practitioner, it means that we have a spiritual practice, that we are in constant communion with the Reiki energy. We are looking at how is the Reiki showing up for me today? How am I allowing that energy to flow through me into this physical world for the greatest and highest good of all involved? How am I allowing Reiki to guide me towards healing, towards love, towards light? How am I allowing Reiki to release all of the things that are no longer true to me so that I can come back into the truth of who I am, so that I can come back into the truth of what Reiki energy is? And so again, at its core, Reiki recognizes that everything in the universe is made up of energy and that energy can become stagnant or sluggish. And that is what leads us to various forms of dis-ease. So again, like we were talking about a little bit ago, things like anxiety or depression or autoimmune disorders or physical illness, all of these 
physical or psychological illnesses that we have have an energetic counterpart. And the way that I like to explain this is if you think about how when an architect is going into a housing project, you're not just going to show up on the property and start laying materials down willy-nilly. You're going to have a blueprint. And from this blueprint, you're going to then create the actual physical building that you want to be building. And so we have an energetic blueprint for everything that occurs in this physical reality. And so all of the illnesses, all of the states of dis- ease that we experience in this physical world have their counterpart in our energetic blueprint. And so Reiki works to heal by activating our body and our soul's inherent capacity for healing, its inherent ability to restore itself to a state of wholeness, to a state of health, to a state of well-being activating this ability while also clearing away the parts of the energetic blueprint that are no longer serving us, resetting it to, you know, a factory state, if you will, doing a factory reset on our body by clearing out all of the blockages, opening up our energy channels, activating our body's innate ability to heal. So Reiki is a very gentle way of interacting with health and healing and energy because it is that divine energy. And it works to bring us health by uplifting us to our quote unquote original state or our core state of being one with all that is, of being divine, of being healed, being whole, because that is our core state. And that is how Reiki recognizes us in practice, is looking at us and saying that we are one with all things, that we are in our core, in our natural state. We are healed, we are whole, and we are love. And so Reiki works by uplifting us back into that natural state. And it's a very divine process. So while traditional Usui Reiki Ryoho and many of the other ways that Reiki is practiced today uses this idea of divine energy, of kind of reattuning our energy to its original state in an uplifting way, Shamanic Reiki then balances this divine perspective with a more earth nature-based perspective. And so it's important here to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about shamanism before we even begin to talk about shamanic Reiki. Shamanism is a practice of connecting with the spirit of all things, understanding that there is spirit, there is life, there is energy in all things. And again, if you're listening closely, this probably sounds really familiar with what we were talking about a moment ago with traditional Usui Reiki Ryoho, because Reiki views Reiki as a universal life force, the energy that flows through all things. Shamanism follows the beliefs of animism, which is this belief that there is life, that there is energy, that there's animation in all things, whether it is a person or a tree or the chair that I'm sitting on. There is a universal life force energy that flows through it all. And so shamanism is a set of spiritual practices that were developed over hundreds and thousands of years, ways of communing with nature, ways of tapping into the spiritual reality that exists beyond this physical reality. So looking at that spiritual energetic blueprint that we were talking about a moment ago, that is what shamanism helps us to connect to and not only connect to because we connect to that blueprint when we're working with Reiki, but what shamanism does, what shamanic practices allow us to do is then go into that blueprint and interact with it, to go into the spiritual realm and in a conscious, intentional, profound way, interact with the elements of a spiritual life, of the spiritual realm that exists just beyond the reach of this physical reality. And so what that looks like is allowing the practitioner, allowing the shamanic practitioner to access deeper levels of consciousness, to work directly with our spirit guides, to travel in non-ordinary reality, to access altered states of consciousness that then give us a wider, broader, bigger, more in-depth perspective of what's happening in the spiritual world around us. And this is something that I think every Reiki practitioner can relate to of we're in a session, whether it's a self-healing session or working on someone else, we'll be working, we'll be feeling the energy, things are moving. And all of a sudden there's something there that we haven't experienced before. Maybe an angel appears to you in a session, or maybe you start seeing colors flash before your eyes, or maybe there's an area in the client's body where the energy is really stagnant or cold or dense, and you're not entirely sure why, and you don't quite know what to do with it. 
these moments in our Reiki practice, when we feel called to something deeper, when we feel called to explore what's just beyond our reach in this moment, what's just beyond the physical reality, what's just beyond what our Reiki energy is touching. And so the way that I look at it is that Reiki is the energy that we utilize. Reiki is the way that we connect with the divine. But shamanism and shamanic practices are the way that we then use that connection, that we then use that energy to go in and to understand and to interact and to heal and to create tangible differences in our lives or in our clients' lives. And so when we look at shamanic Reiki, what we're really looking at is can we bring balance to the divine healing state that Reiki energy gives us and the natural earth-based healing of shamanic practices and bridge the gap between those two by working in the area of non-ordinary reality, by connecting with our spirit teams, by developing our clairvoyance so that we can both exist in this physical world. We can see this human life around us, but then we can also see and access the energetic blueprint that's underlying all of it. That's just beyond the physical. Can we open ourselves up to understanding that there is so much more to this life than meets the eye? And when we do that, can we then give ourselves the tools and techniques to be able to interact with that in a conscious way? And so something that I've said a couple times that might not make entire sense is this idea of interacting with non-ordinary reality. So what do I mean by non-ordinary reality? Non-ordinary reality is the idea that, again, there is an energetic blueprint underlying all things. So if we are talking about this physical reality that we have here in front of us, the one that every single person listening to this is familiar with, right? We all understand what it feels like to sit in a chair or to run water over our hands or to go outside and feel the wind on our face. We all understand what it is like to interact with a physical, quote unquote, ordinary world. What we then do as spiritual seekers, as Reiki practitioners, as shamanic Reiki practitioners, is we acknowledge that, yes, there is this physical world all around us that we can interact with, that we can touch, that we can move, that we can shape, that we can change. But beyond that, there is an energetic realm. There is a spiritual aspect to this life. And that is the non-ordinary reality. This energetic spiritual place is where magic occurs, where healing occurs, where there is mystical experience to be had, where there is wisdom, where there are loving guides and our ancestors and this wisdom that flows through all things. If we believe in Reiki energy, if we practice Reiki, then we immediately believe in non-ordinary reality because we are playing with things that go beyond the scope of the physical world. We are playing with aspects of life that are more than just this physical, ordinary reality. We begin to play with the non ordinary aspects of life. And when we do this, it opens up entirely new perspectives on what it means to be human. Because suddenly not only do we have what's right in front of us in this physical world, but then we have the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. And what's beyond that? And what does this mean? And why is it this way? And how can we use these tools in this physical world to accentuate the spiritual reality that we have happening? And the beauty of this is that when we can bring balance into this perspective, right, we talk all the time here at Reiki Cafe University about how it's so important to recognize that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, but that doesn't mean that you can just skip over the human experience to try and get back to the spiritual experience. We have to have both the spiritual and the physical, the energetic experience and the human experience. We have to find a way to balance both because that's why we are here. And so if Reiki is that spiritual, energetic, divine experience, shamanistic practices or shamanic practices lead us into connection with the human aspect of ourselves, with nature, with earth, with this physical reality, by helping us to understand that at the core of this physical reality 
is an energetic reality. And it all comes back into that spiritual foundation. And it begins this beautiful cycle. We can start to see it in a circle of our human selves lead us into deeper awareness of our spiritual selves. And our spiritual selves lead us into deeper awareness of our human selves. And this is the beauty of a shamanic Reiki practice is it allows you to hold both spaces at once. It allows you to inhabit this physical reality more completely, more deeply, more profoundly, because you understand that there is more to this reality than meets the eye. And it allows you to then connect with Reiki energy to bring in this spiritual perspective, because now you understand in a deep, tangible way that Reiki energy is running through all things. And then we can use the healing tools that we now have in our toolkit through shamanic practices to help us come into connection with those things, to help us heal, to help us complete that cycle of spiritual to human to spiritual to human more easily, more gracefully with more acceptance and intention and awareness and so some of these practices that we use in shamanic reiki are things like the shamanic journey and what the shamanic journey does is we've been talking about accessing areas of non-ordinary reality and so as a shamanic practitioner the important part, the thing that distinguishes a shamanic practice from any other spiritual practice is the addition, the ability of the practitioner to go on a shamanic journey. And a shamanic journey is essentially like if you've ever done a guided meditation or you've ever sat and visualized going on a journey or going to heal something or going back in your memories and experiencing something in a different way. If you've ever done a visualization or a guided meditation, that's very similar at the end of the day to what a shamanic journey is. But the difference is that when you shamanic journey, there are three main components that make this stand apart from a guided meditation. The first is that shamanic journeys begin with the use of a very specific drum beat. And the reason that we use this drum beat is because it helps alter our brain waves, alter our states of consciousness into a theta state so that we are open to an altered perspective, an open level of consciousness that we don't usually reach in waking life. It's the same state that we go into when we are dreaming. And so it opens us up to being able to perceive things in the spiritual world, being able to perceive things that we can't usually experience when we're awake. It's also believed that this drumbeat, this rhythm that we listen to when we go on a shamanic journey is the same as the beat of the waterfall that was falling on Mikau Sui's head when he was meditating on Mount Kurama and received the Reiki teachings. So that's a fun, interesting bit of connection between shamanism and Reiki. And Reiki really does have shamanic roots, which we'll go into another time. But we listen to this drumbeat. We come into this space where we are opening our consciousness, where we are allowing ourselves to reach an altered state of being without the use of plant medicine, without the use of substances, just by listening to this drumbeat that is being shown neurologically. There are actually studies on this, which are fascinating. It's being shown to alter our brainwaves into a theta state. The second aspect of shamanic journeying that sets it apart from a traditional guided meditation is the fact that in a shamanic journey, you are going to one of three realms. There's the upper realm, the middle realm, and the lower realm. This is not to be confused with the lower world or the underworld, as a lot of people call it. It is not like in organized religions, heaven or hell. It's not what we're talking about here. The three shamanic realms signify three different layers of our reality. So the upper world is what I like to call for helping people understand. I like to call it kind of the Reiki world. It is this divine ethereal energy. It is where if we were thinking of energy on a spectrum where we have at one end of the spectrum, the denser, heavier energies that allow us to exist in this physical world, the energy that has to be so dense that I can feel it, that allows this table in front of me to be tangible, that I can touch it and my hands can't pass through it, that density of energy that occurs here in the physical world. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we have those ethereal divine energies like Reiki energy that is uplifting, that is formless, that is shapeless, that is more expansive, more ethereal than anything we could experience here on earth. If we look at these energies on this spectrum, 
The upper world is that the quote unquote higher end of the spectrum, those ethereal divine energies are flowing in the upper world. The upper world is formless. It is shapeless. It is where our guides and our angels and our ancestors and those who can channel, etc., the galactic energies, that is where those energies reside in the upper world. Then we have the lower world, which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. It deals with the denser energies, with the more nature-based energies. This is where we find things like our power animals or the nature spirits. The lower world is where we look at symbolism and things like metaphors for helping us heal. Though That ability, things like numerology or tarot or this kind of thing, often exist in the lower world because it's dealing with denser, more physical energies, more nature-based healing happens in the lower world. And then we have the middle world. And the middle world is fascinating because it's essentially like um, in Alice through the looking glass, when she steps through the looking glass and is in kind of like a reflection of her usual day-to-day -day reality, that's what the middle world is. The middle world is an energetic representation of our physical reality. And so it's like we get to step into a space and understand the deeper meaning that's happening in everything. We can see the energetic blueprint underlying all things that exist in the middle world. And so when you learn to shamanic journey, you learn to travel to each of these three different realms, understanding that each one has a different kind of knowledge and wisdom and support to offer. You have your lower world friends, your power animals, your nature spirits, symbolism and numerology, and all of these things exist in the lower world. Then you have in the upper world, your guides, your ancestors, your angels, this uplifting, healing Reiki energy in the upper world. And then in the middle world, you have this more physical understanding of being able to look beyond this physical reality and understand what's happening. And so when we're looking at all of this, that's the second aspect of shamanic journeying is you turn on the drumbeat and you journey to one of these three realms. The third aspect of shamanic journeying that really sets this apart is the understanding that through all things, we can go and interact with the spiritual. We can interact with the energetic. We can connect to our guides and ask them questions. This is the process of direct revelation. And what direct revelation is, is the understanding that when we come to terms with, when we come to connection with our spiritual selves, we understand that we have access to all of the wisdom, all of the insight, all of the power, all of the healing that exists in the spiritual realm, so long as we open ourselves up to it. And so direct revelation is the process of journeying to meet a guide or meet a power animal or meet an ancestor or meet a being of consciousness that has answers that we don't have inside ourselves. And we can then go and ask, we can then go and seek for those questions that we don't know the answer to within our own human reality. We can then venture into the spiritual and we can ask and we can receive answers. And so this ability to journey, this ability to have and experience direct revelation is another thing that sets shamanic journeying apart. And what's really beautiful about this is that when we can journey, when we know how to step into the spiritual world and receive answers, to ask questions, to receive insight and initiate healing and be intentional in our connection with the spiritual, suddenly what happens is we can never be lost. We can never be in a state of chronic dis ease because we have a more holistic perspective. We're no longer cutting off part of ourselves. We're no longer saying that the spiritual world is mystical and full of mysteries that we'll never know. And so we're just going to cut it off and leave it there. What we're doing is we're opening the door to deeper understanding of ourselves, of the world around us, of how we function, of why we function the way we function. And shamanic journeys are incredibly powerful because, again, it gives you this assurance that no matter the question, no matter the problem, no matter the thing that you were worried about, you have the answers available to you. You have the ability to journey, to understand, to come into connection with what is happening and what is important and what you need to know in each moment because you are opening yourself up to this spiritual perspective. 
And so as a shamanic Reiki practitioner, what we're doing is we're then combining all of these things. We're combining Reiki healing and that divine art and the symbols and the hand positions and, and however you practice Reiki, this divine way of perceiving Reiki energy. And we're combining that with shamanic practices, the act of shamanic journey and the act of working with nature, seeing beyond this physical reality of opening ourselves up to our intuition and to clairvoyance, to practicing things like soul retrieval, like entity removal, like intrusive object removal, like chakra spinning, like shamanic journey, these aspects and these tools that we can open ourselves up to when we walk in the shamanic way of life, when we understand that underneath the physical, there is an energetic blueprint that not only can we perceive the way that we do in a Reiki practice, but we can actually go into it. We can go in and experience and ask questions of it and change it and play with it and work with it in a way that is honoring that truth, honoring the intention of that blueprint while also uplifting it and allowing it to change and evolve and expand for the greatest and highest good of all. And so as a shamanic Reiki practitioner, there are all of these different tools that we use that we don't typically use in a Reiki practice, right? When we have a traditional Usui Reiki Ryoho practice, our Reiki sessions look more or less the same. We come in, we have a client or we have ourselves, and we use our hands to channel that Reiki energy and to facilitate healing. But as a shamanic Reiki practitioner, you have access to many, many tools that go beyond the usual scope of a Reiki practice. These are things like drumming, again, to facilitate your brain into reaching an altered level of consciousness in a natural and profound way that allow you to have these experiences of direct revelation of the spiritual realms, but also remember them and interact with them intentionally and pull wisdom from them and understanding from them. We have things like soul retrieval, which is a process that includes retrieving and reintegrating fragmented aspects of your soul. And this helps yourself or your client reclaim lost parts of themselves and gives you a greater perspective of feeling whole and of healing. We have things like negative entity removal or chakra balancing and spinning and so many more things that when we open ourselves up to a shamanic practice, we can interact with the energy in new ways. And so shamanic Reiki is truly astounding for your practice, whether you are using it for personal use or for use with a client. If you're using it for self-healing, it gives you a new level of confidence in yourself, of access to your intuition, of developing your clairvoyance. It gives you this sense of solidity and safety in your practice, knowing that you're surrounded by a team of spiritual guides and wisdom and power animals and ancestors, that you have access to all of the answers you could ever need, and that no matter what you are doing in your practice, no matter what you encounter in your waking life or in your spiritual practice, you have a support team. It gives you tools and techniques so that when you're feeling emotionally triggered or psychologically triggered or energetically out of balance, you know exactly what you need to do in each moment because you are so profoundly aware and intimately connected with the energetic reality that's underlying this physical one. It gives you the ability to, when you have a question, you just go ask. And one of my favorite things about shamanic journeys is that it is incredibly difficult to explain how profound a journey is until you have experienced one for yourself. And so on Reiki Cafe Radio, we do have a couple guided shamanic journeys that you can go and experience for yourself, knowing that in the fullest expression of a shamanic journey, it's not guided. You're going through yourself. You're doing this process yourself in that process of direct revelation, but that you can experience the profound healing nature of a shamanic journey when you do one that is guided. But I also love to share stories about how healing and how profound a shamanic journey can be because it's incredibly important to be able to understand what are we working with? What are we looking at? How does it actually impact us? Because all of this sounds great, right? Being able to connect to our intuition and develop our clairvoyance and know that we have a team of loving ancestors and guides, and it all sounds great. But we're left with this feeling of, well, what if it doesn't work, right? What if it's not real? How do we know that these things are actually occurring? How do we know that these shamanic practices are actually giving us altered states of consciousness or access to new wisdom or what have you? How do we know and so if you're listening to this and that's what you're questioning, that's okay. Our minds are inherently wired 
towards skepticism. And that is a beautiful gift because what it does is it allows us to go deeper, to ask questions, to find our own answers. And that process of seeking, of questioning and seeking an answer is in and of itself shamanic in its root. Because what we are doing is we are asking questions. We are being skeptical. We're saying, I don't quite know what this means. I'm not sure if I believe this. Let me go find out. It is that inherent level of curiosity that signifies the start of a shamanic practitioner because it is allowing us to understand that there are answers beyond our current grasp, beyond our current level of wisdom or access. And that ability to be curious, that ability to ask questions, that ability to want to go deeper is often actually a sign that you are being called to go deeper, that you are being called to step into the way of a shamanic Reiki practitioner because you have that ability, that humility in a sense to be able to say, I don't know this answer right now, but I want to find out. I am open and willing to learn. And when we can open ourselves up to what is beyond this physical reality, when we can open ourselves up to the spiritual and open ourselves up to different ways of interacting with and perceiving the spiritual, that's when magic happens. And so I do want to share just a quick experience that I had in a shamanic journey to kind of highlight what it can look like, knowing that every single journey is always different. So I, on this particular journey, I started the drum beat. I went into my meditation. You always start in your happy place when you start a shamanic journey. It's a safe space that you've created in your mind. It could be somewhere that you've actually been in your physical life, or it could just be something that you have created in your imagination, in this energetic space. And so I've started in my happy place. Mine is a small glade in the middle of the woods. And as I began this journey, the spirit of squirrel greeted me. And this is one thing that is beautiful in shamanic journeys is that you are surrounded by spirits. You are surrounded by archetypes, by energetic beings who are there to offer you messages, who are there to help you along your journey, who are there to protect you. And so for me, Squirrel showed up reminding me of the importance of fun and play and not to take myself so seriously, and this was really profound because the reason that I was doing this particular journey is I was journeying at a time in my life where I was working on healing from a really deep eating disorder and a lot of shame around my physical body and my physical experience and a lot of the health issues that I had. And so to begin this journey, being greeted by the spirit of squirrel was really profound for me at the time because it was this reminder that in all of this, you don't have to take yourself so seriously. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. You can have fun and play in the process of healing. And so then he guided me up this staircase made of tree roots. And this is something that you'll see in many, many shamanic journeys is this level of symbolism and visual experience that guides you through the spiritual world. And so I jumped off the edge of the staircase and down into this deep, dark blue sea. And when I came out of the water, I was in the lower world. And again, the lower world is where those denser energies are, where we're playing with things like symbolism and metaphor and our power animals. And to me, the lower world looks like a desert valley. It's kind of full of all of these reeds and really, um, um, trying to think like wheat type grasses, really long reedy plants, lots of neutral tones. And when I came into the lower world on this particular journey, it was nighttime and I was guided to a cliff's edge. And when I looked over the cliff's edge, I saw this larger version of me, very reminiscent of um, Tufiti from the Disney movie Moana, that large island being that looked like a human, but just bigger, more expansive, more powerful, a more spiritual version of me. And so this larger version of me kind of scooped up the small version of me in her palm. And she was like, sit down, I have things to say. And so I sat down on her palm and I'm, I'm listening to her. And this is the beauty of a shamanic journey is it doesn't have to make sense right away because what it's doing, what a shamanic journey is, is it's giving your subconscious mind a moment to be able to step out, to step beyond your conscious filter and show you what's happening on a deeper level. And this is something that we'll talk about in future podcasts of what exactly a shamanic journey is and how do I know that I'm not just making it up? And what if I am just making it up? And I didn't feel like that made any sense. Does it matter if my journeys are coherent, et cetera, et cetera? Those are things we'll talk about in the future. 
But she told me to sit down. And so I sat down on her palm and she showed me this mirror. And in the mirror, as I was looking at myself, I saw myself as this distorted version, this inflated, disfigured, ugly version of me inside and out. And the spirit told me to look away and look back at the mirror. And when I looked back, I saw myself as I truly am. I saw my normal physical self, but this time I was surrounded by the people in my life who love me. And the message that she gave me in this was, you see yourself as unlovable. You see yourself as disgusting, as malformed, as if you are missing something and not enough. But the reality is that I am already loved, that I am already enough. I just have to allow myself to see it. And then she removed the mirror and I asked her about these health issues that I had been having at the time and what was holding me back from levels of well-being and health. And she told me very gently, but also very firmly that I kept myself stuck in illness because it gave me an excuse. It gave me an excuse to separate myself from life, taking a back seat to life's experiences to kind of protect myself from pain. I did it to protect myself, but in trying to keep myself safe, I was really cutting myself off from the joy of being alive, healthy, and happy. And in that moment, she was encouraging me to embrace health, to open myself back up to the fullness of life experiences, knowing that being open doesn't just lead to heartbreak, doesn't just lead to being hurt. And before I ended the journey, she opened up her other palm and this beautiful toucan came out. And at the time, I didn't know what this meant. I didn't know what the spirit of a toucan was, but I knew that it was important. And so after the journey, when I came out of it, I looked up what the spiritual meaning of the toucan as a spirit animal is. And in that, toucans as spirit animals, they represent showing your true colors and releasing shyness or insecurity and being fully present, showing up in the fullness of who you are. And what a profound gift to be given when I was learning about releasing shame around my body, when I was learning what it looked like to allow myself to just be, when I was learning to see myself as someone who was loved and was enough, right? And so then as I was coming out of this journey, I was really just struck by the depth of healing that took place, understanding that all of that happened in 15 minutes, right? Shamanic journeys are very, very quick. It's not like I was in this for hours and hours and hours, But it was a 15 minute experience where I came out of that understanding why I had been keeping myself sick. I had this empowered perspective, this ability to being handed a gift that said, hey, step out of victim mode, wake up and understand that you're keeping yourself here, but you don't have to understand that you are choosing to see yourself as unlovable when in reality you are already loved. Here is this spirit animal. Here's this energetic archetype that can then guide you through this process. And what was beautiful about this is I was then able to take the information that I received on this journey, this insight and this wisdom that was so incredibly profound at the time. I was able to take that and then bring it into my Reiki practice and look at, okay, I'm looking at things like my identity, my feelings of not being lovable, of not being enough. That is a very much a solar plexus issue. So we're going to bring Reiki in to our solar plexus. We're going to bring healing energy into our solar plexus. But we're also looking at things like being loved and being able to receive love. And that's in our heart. So let's work on bringing harmony to our heart chakra. Let's bring our Reiki energy here. Let's go through the process in our daily life of going back to the Reiki precepts, the Reiki principles, and looking at, am I being kind to myself in this? Am I being honest Am I telling myself the truth or am I keeping myself stuck in a lie because it's trying to protect me? And what's amazing about journeys is that this level of healing, something as quick as a drop in the bucket, 15 minutes of a journey, then led me on three months of healing just from this one journey because I was able to sit with each element, with each aspect, and I was able to pull it apart and go deeper. I was able to reconnect with the spirit of Toucan to help me have that courage and that confidence to show up as I truly was when I needed it. I was able to go back and connect with that spirit version of me that had offered me so much wisdom. I was able to go and sit in meditation or in my Reiki practice and reconnect to that energy of love that I felt when I saw myself surrounded by my loved ones in that mirror. All of these aspects were catalysts for another three months of healing. And I remember feeling like in that one shamanic journey and in the three months that occurred after it, I had done as much healing and as much shifting and as much, again, direct revelation 
as I would have done in three years of therapy. And this is the beauty of a shamanic Reiki practice is it brings us into a holistic perspective of who we are. It takes the physical and the spiritual and the emotional and the psychological, and it puts them all together. And it says, how can we use all of these tools that we have available to us? How can we shamanic journey and connect to our guides and use Reiki energy and connect with the divine and meditate and use the symbols, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How can we take all of these things and put them together in one practice so that we are not cutting ourselves off from one aspect of who we are. We're not focusing over much on our spiritual or over much on our human selves or whatever it is, but we're looking at ourselves as a holistic being. We are understanding that we are all one. Our spiritual and our human selves are really just reflections of each other. And when we can learn to work with both, when we can find tools that integrate both of these aspects of ourselves and bridge the gap between the two, that is where true healing occurs. That is where true insight and wisdom occurs because we're not separating ourselves. We're not saying here's the spiritual and here's the human, but we're bringing them together. We're finding ways to come into communion with each, to introduce our spirit teams, to introduce healing to all of these different aspects of our being in a really tangible, profound way. And so again, shamanic Reiki and shamanic journeys are something that take years sometimes to be able to master, right? We might be able to learn to shamanic journey in four months, but that ability to shamanic journey is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just this open invitation to dive even deeper, to explore more, to learn more about yourself and the world and the spirit realms, et cetera, et cetera. It is an invitation to step into the energy of being an eternal student of allowing yourself to heal so that you can then integrate all of these aspects, all of these areas in your life. It is this invitation to go deeper, to be curious, to invite in the magic, to understand that there is not a separation, that there's not just one way to heal, but that we can create a personalized journey that we can have all of these tools in our toolkit so that when we need them, we know exactly what we need to pull out. We know exactly which guide we need to go talk to to ask this question. We know exactly which chakra we need to interact with to bring balance to. We know exactly where we're going to put our hands in our Reiki practice. We know exactly how we're going to uplift and awaken our energy by channeling Reiki into this specific part of our being. We are going to step into this realm where there are no questions, there are only answers. Where there are no problems, there are only opportunities. Where we see the holistic perspective of life. And by life, I don't just mean human life, but spiritual life, all of our life, every aspect of it, when we have the perspective to be able to see all of this at once, and instead of being overwhelmed or stuck in victim mode or fear, we are stepping into being empowered and confident and connected and clear and open to it all, that is when true magic and healing occurs and profound wisdom is available in a 10-minute meditation where love, unconditional love is available to us every time we take a breath, where the answer to every question we have is accessible if we just have the courage to ask, where we can solve any puzzle that life presents to us by connecting with our spirit team, by connecting with the energetic blueprint, by having the courage to dive in and see what we can change, what's ready to be released, by having the curiosity and the courage and the openness and the skill and the magic to be able to say all the aspects of life, the spiritual and the human, the energetic and the physical, all these aspects are one. They are all the same. How can I embrace all of these in a practice that allows me to become my highest self, become my fullest self, release what doesn't serve me, and step into an empowered state of being? And so that is truly what shamanic Reiki does at the end of the day, is it gives you a deeper perspective on healing. It takes this amazing, beautiful energy that we have in Reiki, and it combines it with this profound wisdom and experience of seeing beyond the physical. And it balances the two and gives us a practice that allows us to see ourselves as a truly holistic being in that empowered state. 
And so I hope that you enjoyed today's conversation. This is going to start the beginning of a shamanic Reiki series here at Reiki Cafe University. So if you're interested in learning more about shamanic journeys, about your spirit team, about how to develop your clairvoyance, about the importance of shadow work in your practice, about what self-healing looks like and why is it actually important, et cetera, et cetera, all of these really amazing topics that we touched on in today's episode, then be sure to stick around, keep an eye on our YouTube channel and our podcast as well as in the Reiki Cafe community Facebook group. Keep an eye on all of these amazing platforms because we're going to be sharing so much information over the next month on shamanic Reiki and shamanic practices in general. So if you had a question that popped up during today's episode that didn't get answered, feel free to send it to me in Messenger, shoot us an email, leave us a comment in the Facebook group, and we will be sure to address it in one of our future podcasts or coffee conversations or a post on social media. This is really your time to dive into shamanic Reiki, whether you decide to join us for Soul Rising for our four-month course where we dive so deep into every single one of these topics that we talked about, where we take you on the journey, not just talking about the theory of it, but we actually guide you through the journey of coming into this connection, coming into this healing, coming into this communion with yourself and with this spiritual world. Whether you join us for that course or you're just here to satiate your own curiosity and learn more, this is going to be your chance to do so. So be sure to join us on all of our platforms be open, ask questions, know that if you have a question, we will answer it. If you're curious about learning more about our Soul Rising program, feel free to click the link to visit the webpage and learn more about the program or hop on a call with myself or Christine. There's a link to do that on the webpage, or you can just message me directly on Facebook and I'll be happy to set up a time to talk with you to see if this is your next step, if this is your next calling. And until then, thank you all so very, very much for joining me today. This was a fantastic conversation and I hope hope that you enjoyed it, that you're walking away with some insight, with some inspiration, and with something to look forward to in the coming months. I would love to hear what your top takeaway was. Feel free to leave a comment over in the Reiki Cafe community Facebook group. And until then, thank you all so very much for joining with us today. We'll see you next time. Sending love.